right, y'all. It's uh, Thursday, April the 18th, and we're off on uh, on a uh, new uh, air conditioner and coal installation, R410A. We're going to try to beat the weather. Uh, I'm sure that looks familiar to y'all guys. There's that uh, park that I took those pictures at with the tank and the, and the helicopter and whatnot. But, uh, anyway, guys, uh, we're going to try to beat, beat the inclement weather coming here. Um, Man, they're calling again for strong winds and tornadoes and, and whatnot tonight. So we're going to get over here and uh, try to get everything installed real quick. So, all right, guys, just an update, and uh, I'll get you some more footage here in a minute. Okay, okay. y'all, me and Eddie out here, and uh, we're uh, uh, recovering the refrigerant out of this old train here. So uh, let us get after it, and we'll get back to y'all in a few minutes. All right, guys. Okay, guys, every now and then you get lucky. I sized my coil and I was able to get the exact same coil uh, box as I had on the last one. So basically I got Ed to hold the duct work up for me and then we slid it back down and all I got to do is uh, shoot some zip screws in it and do a little pookie in and we're good to go. Uh, and then we're going to get brazed up. So, all right guys. Bear okay, y'all, Eddie broke out a swag tool and uh, he made himself a coupling right there. We've got our 3 8 coming out to it and uh, we've, uh, we've blown it out. And now he's going to weld it up, and he's going to be flowing nitrogen, and he's going to bring that ball up to about five or ten or whatever he wants to put it on. I, I really don't care. Um, but this way we don't exhaust our nitrogen. But uh, I have uh, bought myself two extra bottles, though. So you just let her flow however you want to, Eddie. We're off our coil, our new coil here, our R410A coil. And what we're doing this for is so we can uh, get some wet rags and let TXZ in there. You don't want to sweat these in and possibly burn it up. All right. So what he's doing now is we've got some like tube socks. They, they wrap around the valves really well and you can almost tie them up. So what he's doing is he's ensuring we don't melt the valves here. It takes a couple seconds. Yeah, we got a little dirty today. <laughs> I mean, I had the clean job downstairs, but uh, our. Uh, our coal fit right back on top of that thing. No sheet, sheet metal work to do whatsoever. Nothing. You got the easy job. That's right. <laughs> okay. This your kid or mine? Yours. Put it on there tight enough? Yeah. Ah. My God. I got it on there. We should have picked Lori up. Alright, we got the install manual out here. It's wanting us to pull down to at least 350 micron. Alright, right now we're down to about 150, so we'll go ahead and blank it off. See what it does. So it gives us a one minute rise. Yeah, one minute rise. Observe the micron gauge evacuation. Is completed if the micron gauge is not reached above 500 microns in the first one minute. I'm not keeping time, but we'll do it in about a minute. So we have a judge author. Uh, yes, you're going to see it on the screen. Do, do, 
do, do, but we're good. We're not going to go nowhere near 500 anyways. Alright, but we just want to show you that we did pull a vacuum on it. Uh, it I've got the uh, double pole on this, uh, I believe I, I think I have my glasses on here, but I believe it's an 8 and 10 right here. And it's a double pole 30. Now, when you're changing a unit out, guys, it, especially in our state, the, one of the first things the, the inspector goes and looks at is like the max and min uh, breaker size on the unit. And that one's an oddball out there. It's calling for a 25, uh, a 25 max and a min 15. So I'm gonna, I believe I've got a double pole 20 on the, on the truck. So let me get after this and, and get this taken apart and uh, we'll get right back to you. Okay right, guys. guys, the uh, unit is requiring a maximum 25 double pole and uh, we had a 30 in it so i went up and i bought a, uh, a double pole 20 up there at lowe's that's uh, a it's a simmons panel but uh, all they had was a uh, murray so looks like it's pretty daggone close i think it'll work so okay right, guys, guys we get got out. our brand new uh, double pole 20 murray installed in our uh, siemens panel here and we've got it marked off here number eight number eight and nine i mean so uh we're good to go as soon as uh as soon as we get everything buttoned up we'll fire this puppy up and Alright guys, we're going to go ahead and measure airflow and make sure we're getting the right BTUs. We're running a two and a half ton uh, AC and a two and a half ton uh, uh, coil here, R410A. Call one of my buddies. I couldn't remember how to set up my meter. I pulled the batteries out. I called to get help. Thanks, Robert. I appreciate it. Good man. And here we go, guys. We are running 30,000 BTUs and 1,100 CFMs. Okay. We're putting these caps on there just to make sure everything looks good. Everything look nice for you guys. Okay, guys. We've done our measurement downstairs, and what we're actually looking for is right here, 10 degrees, plus or minus three on the subcool. We're reading right at, uh, reading right at 11, and 5.4 degrees of uh, superheat. All right, guys, we're gonna button it up and get on out. All right, guys, I reckon we're done for the day. There's that American Standard Gold Series. All right, guys. I appreciate y'all watching. All right, guys. I guess a heating and air man's job is never done. I uh, just got home. House 77 here. Uh, feels a little warm in the house here. And I pulled it down to 65. Uh, Mom said she was hearing a strange noise come from it. And uh, I just told her to kill it and I'll be home in a minute. So, well, yeah, home in a little bit. And heck, it's just now hitting 78. So we got to do something about this, guys. Ain't it right, boy? All right, there we go. I wonder what's going on there. Uh-uh-uh. How many capacitors do you think this thing's going to go through? All right, guys, I think I got one on the truck. Heck, I think I put two on this thing last year. Uh-uh-uh. All right, guys, let me get after this so I can get in there and get me some dinner. Getting kind of hungry, guys. Mm. That was a knuckle buster. Alright, let me see if I got a cap. Supposed to get some bad weather tonight, guys. Real bad weather. Crash day too, so I'm sure everybody's garbage is going to be everywhere. They're talking about hurricane force winds again and all that mess. Can't never catch a break here.
All right, let me get this thing apart. Hey, y'all, I would have went through this a little bit better, but y'all seen this done a million times. I'm trying to get the air conditioning back on. We're getting ready to get hit by a big storm here. So, uh... Hey, what's up, Carl? You getting anything done? Well, I got that job done, and I get home, and my air conditioner's out. Yeah, it's a capacitor. I'm, I'm messing with it right now. As y'all can see, it's zero. I'm getting ready to All get All right, guys, we got a uh, dead puppy here. I, I figured that's what it was. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail. I'm, I've got one lead hooked to common, one lead hooked to fan. I'm on microferrets here. So uh, I've got everything hooked back together. I didn't have one of these round ones, so I had to adapt and overcome with one of these uh, these uh, funky ones here. So let's see if, uh, she, see if she's going to start for us, guys. Hit the hole here. There we go, guys. Rochester's heating and air is up running again. All right, y'all, let me get everything buttoned down and uh, I'm going to try to get that video up we shot today. All right, guys, I appreciate y'all watching so much. And um, as for that open forum we did, I'm sorry I ain't got back to none of y'all, but I wanted to kind of leave that open so everybody and their brother can come in there and respond and, and give us uh, their opinion. Um, I value everybody's opinion. I don't think there's a wrong answer. But, uh, all right, guys, let me get everything buttoned up. Uh, like I said, we're getting ready to get slammed here. So, uh, okay, y'all, we'll get a little bonus footage. Uh, I had to come back over here. I didn't have a safety float switch, and it's required here. So, uh, let me get after this and get my secondary uh, plug out here. So, uh, let me get after it, and I'll show you the finish. Okay, y'all, there really ain't a whole lot to these. Uh, basically, all I'm going to do is uh, put a little pipe dope on my uh, MIP thread here, screw it into the secondary, and you can actually look at uh, look, look at the door on here, and it'll tell you primary and secondary. And basically, I don't know if you can see up in there, but there's like a lip. I can zoom in on it with the with the wicked cam cannon here. So once it rises over that lip right there, guys. Say for instance, she was freezing up or something. You've actually got a uh, a little float in here. See it? And once the water gets that and it gets up, it'll trigger, uh, it'll uh, kill the unit. So basically what I'll do is uh, I'll uh, break the yellow in there and uh, we'll have at it. Okay, guys. Okay, guys, we've got our secondary float switch up and running. And basically, uh, once you uh, put one of these in, guys, or anything like this where you're uh, breaking a wire, I suggest you go up to the thermostat and try it out and make sure everything's working. Um, that's, you know, that's, uh, that's, that could be a, a little callback right there if you don't. Uh, just don't assume anything. Go up there and fire it up. It only takes a second. But uh, anyway, the uh, the safety float here is a piece of cake. Basically, it comes with a little MIP in the float itself. So basically what I did is I piped up, doped up the MIP, screwed it into my coil, not super tight. I just went hand tight with it and then uh, attached the float back on it. And I took my wires down to the appropriate wire and I broke it. And uh, basically on these, I break the yellow to shut down the outside unit on an 80% furnace. Um, I don't want them to be without heat just because the furnace, uh, just because the air conditioner might have an issue. So basically it's a different situation on the 90s, guys. So up here too, um, Eddie had his Testo 535 out of course, I know y'all seen that, but uh, actually what I'm doing here guys, you know what I'm doing, I'm messing with my zoom again. But uh, anyway guys, Eddie uh, did that and he, he actually tested with his 435, he tested for over, uh, look at that zoom, he tested at least three times so we could get an average off of it and everything worked out uh, perfect guys, I, I mean it's, it's pretty much dead on the money uh, for what it is here, so uh, basically uh, there it is but uh, anyway guys I appreciate you watching I'm gonna try to get hold of the inspector and, and get everything uh, inspected here so uh, I reckon we'll holler at y'all real soon thanks for watching okay now. guys Bye. our inspector just took off um, I'm very happy uh, about my little green sticker here guys I know I'll probably drive y'all nuts with this but this is one of the most things that I am most proud of right here guys I love to see that attached to any furnace or any coal or any air conditioner that I install that says that I met uh, Kentucky guidelines and requirements and our local code enforcement requirements and uh, everybody should be pulling these guys it's not that difficult all right I appreciate y'all watching and I reckon we'll holler at y'all soon okay take care bye Okay, I'll see you later. You've been a good girl. Yes, you have. What a sweet puppy you are. Even though you got out there and chased all them ducks. <laughs> Just doing your job, ain't you? Okay, we'll see you soon. You've been good.